What's up guys and welcome back to the Keep It Techie channel, your go-to place for all things Linux and tech. I'm your host Josh and today we're diving into something super cool and that's sync theme. And if you've ever wanted a simple and secure way to sync your files between multiple devices, then you're in the right place. So let's get started. So what exactly is SyncThing? In a nutshell, SyncThing is a open source file synchronization tool that lets you sync files across multiple devices without relying on any central server. It's peer to peer, meaning your data stays between your devices, keeping it secure and private. And I'm currently at SyncThing.net. This is where you can go to actually get the package as well as all the documentation. I really wanna highlight the documentation because it's well documented. It is an active project on GitHub. And like I said, it's free and open source. So you could definitely check out the code and all that stuff for the system. They do have a get started guys. So you can get everything set up based on whatever system that you're using. Now, you might be wondering why would I need this? Let's say you're running a business and you're working on a project at home and you want to continue working on that in the office without having to email your files back and forth. Or let's say maybe you have a bunch of family photos that you want to keep synced on all your devices. Well, sync thing makes this super easy and seamless by setting it up and just and just to cover a couple of the key features is cross-platform so you can install it on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and even on Android, which is Linux based. And then you have real-time synchronization so you don't have to worry about your files. Now, another cool feature that's included with the application is version control. So let's say you need to roll back to a older copy. Let's say you save something and it overwrite or is synced in both locations and you need to roll back where you have that option to look at older versions of that file. And then also another cool thing about it, all your transfers are encrypted. So just so you guys know, you should feel safe transferring your data back and forth because it's encrypted. So let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine so I can break it all down for you and get it going. All right, so let's roll up our sleeves and get sync thing installed. And first we'll install it on our Ubuntu server because you have to install it on both devices that you want to sync. First, we need to update our system. That's something you need to do every time you're installing any new package on your Ubuntu system. You don't have to, but I just want you guys to get in the habit of doing that. Now, the next thing we need to do is add the GPG key for the repository for sync in, because what we're gonna do is add basically a PPA on the system. So I'm just paste this in there and I'm gonna show you guys on a desktop. That way we can, you can see both ways of actually installing. You can install it on the server and then you're gonna install it on desktop. The install is different though. But let's go on and add our key, our GPG key, and don't worry about it, app key is deprecated. So they want you to start using the trusted GPG key.d instead. So just ignore that warning for right now. I'm just showing you guys using the pseudo app key add. Now let's go on and add our repository in a way Ubuntu has changed things up. Anytime you add a PPA, you have to add its own list file or sources file. Ubuntu has its own sources file for the Ubuntu repositories. You have to add another file for any other sources that you're adding to the system. Because back in the past, you used to go into that Ubuntu sources file and add your PPAs within that file. Now they want you to do it on a separate file, which is fine. It works better that way. They don't want you touching that Ubuntu sources file, which I recommend you don't. That's just the way we had to do it back in the day. But anyway, let's go down and press enter. This is, what this is gonna do is just echo out the link to the location for the repository for sync theme, and then write it out to a file called sync theme that lists under our sources list. Let's go down and press enter. That'll write that out for us, good to go. And now the next thing you wanna do is run sudo apps update so it can refresh the repository that we just added. Let's run through that. And then what you wanna look for, you'll start seeing, or you'll actually see them both here, the repository there. So we added it properly to the system. Now we can go through and actually install it. So let's type sudo apps install. And then the package name is sync theme and press enter. And it's a real quick install. The package is not too big. It'll go through and install it pretty quick. Now, let me show you guys something right fast. Now that we got it installed, there is some commands you have to type in order to get it started. I'll show you guys that in a second, but first I wanna to go to the demand page for sync 
and this will give you some information on how to actually start the server. And one thing we're doing, we're storing this on the server is headless. The only way we can access this server is from another computer. What I actually do is run on the virtual machine so I can open up the console to it. But I want to show you guys how to do it in case you don't have that. Let's say you want to set this thing up remotely. There's an option in here. But anyway, the man page. You can go through here and get all the information on how to run all the commands that you want up in here. And I recommend you read through this. The documentation on their website is well documented so you guys can figure out how to actually do things because you can run commands from here to your server. But what we're looking for is actually overriding the listening device because by default, the listening address is 127.0.0.1, which is localhost. And I can't access that because this is a headless server and you may run into the same issue in the cloud or something. Let's say you want to sync things up to the cloud or a directory up there. That way it always syncs up there. Then you have to open it up in order to get access, at least initially. And then you can lock it down based on your needs of the server. This is what we're looking for. We're just basically looking for this format. So it's tech GUI, tech address equals, and then we're going to put the 0.0, .0 port 8384. That's the default port for syncing. It's 8384. And one thing you want to do is find out what your IP address is of the server. So mine is 192.168.10.209. So that's what you're going to have to type in once we start syncing. So the default thing you're supposed to do is type syncing and just start it. And this will actually store the server up for you the first time so you can configure it. But what we're going to do is use this override that I found, the man page. So go tech GUI, tech address, and then we want to add equals. So 0.0.0.0.8 or actually port 83. And basically by putting zeros in here, it's just basically opening it up so any IP address can connect to it. But let's go and press enter. It'll start up the website for us. And I'm going to show you guys how to set this up. So it'll automatically store it on your system each time you reboot. You can't. Obviously, you don't want to run it like this all the time because you're going to have to have a terminal open every single time, which is what defeats the purpose. You want it running in the background. So I'm going to show you guys how to set up a service. So switch back over to our browser right fast and type in our IP address of that server. And let's create a new tab and type 168.10.209 and then port 84. Press center and it'll get us up to the server right there right fast so uh, allow anonymous usage reporting you don't have to do that on your own system but this will just basically help them make improvements to the application now danger right here first thing that pops up you need to set a password to your account on here so i'm gonna just use roots i'm gonna go up in here under gui and then you can set your user account i'm gonna just name it root and then we're gonna just give it a password a random password or whatever and then also one thing i'm gonna do is go on and change this up so i can connect to it from anywhere within my network at least because i won't forward any ports or anything that's why i have access to the internet it's behind firewalls and all that stuff so it doesn't matter when it comes to me and if you're using it the exact same way then it doesn't matter you know what i'm saying you're not having this pushed over the internet but if you need to you want to make sure you lock it down the right way and then also this one thing i like that dark theme on it or actually the black no let's do dark let's go save and this will basically restore the server for us. And then let's log into it real fast. I named mine root. And then also let's type in our super strong password for it. Log in. Boom. So we're good to go. We're logged into our server. Now, one of the most important things on this on these servers is once you get it set up, you have to connect it to the other host. And you do that, and I'll show you guys that. It's basically a key that you have to put on the other device. And this will basically say this is authorized to connect to these shares that we have up here on this one specific machine. Now, let me switch back over to the terminal right fast because one other thing I need to do is actually stop this and show you guys how to create a service right fast. And if we switch back over to the website, I just want to show you guys the connection error. So I shut down the server. So you need to create a service. What you want to do is create a service file. So if you type sudo nano and then under our et directory, there's a system D directory and then system directory. And then let's go on and create a sync thing at that service and press enter and let's save that. And then I already have my configuration set up. I'm not going to just go through it. I just give it to you guys if you want it. But this basically is everything you need to set up the service. So there you go. It's going to execute that service. And it really doesn't matter if you open it up now that we have a password on it. You want to go to it as soon as possible and add a password to it. And now it'll run every single time like that. So let's go through and store that service. So let's go sudo system ctl enable sync. 
thing and then add Josh. Just gonna add our account in there. That's fine. And then let's start it. Boom, good to go. And then let's also check the status right fast so we can verify that it's actually working. And I already know it's working because I can see my browser over there, but it says it's active and running and it's enabled. So each time your system restarts, it'll start back up. So let's switch back up to the website. And as you can see that red is gone, we got a connection now. And so actually let's go back to the terminal because first thing I wanna do is show you guys how to actually sync something. But let's start off with a folder right fast. So let's make directory and we'll make a directory called project one and press enter we get ls that directly you'll see it i'm gonna exit out and then i got some files that i want to just copy up into that directory that way we don't have to worry about it so yeah that's fine but i'm basically use or sync and just copy those files up there just to make it super quick okay all right cool so we can log back in we got our files up there in a project directory and if we ls dash la project directory for center you'll see we got some files in there we got some csvs archives so tours encrypted files all kind of little stuff up in there just to have some data up in there and then we'll test it out by moving or removing files or something to that effect and we can see it synchronized to the other system now let's switch back over to the browser right fast and go down and add our share one thing you need to know is that location so if you store it in a different location then you need to know what it is so it creates a folder id you can put a label up here we can just name it project one boom and then all we have to do is it already found the folder based on the name that we typed in there and it's within our home directory project one good to go so home just and then boom we're good to go so let's go down hit save you can go through and check it out you can turn on server versioning ignore patterns and that's some of the features i was telling you about and then some advanced features so let's just hit save get to go and that's our project one share that we have out there and right now it's unshared at the moment all right and so let's switch over to another virtual machine i have right fast and this is pop os so I'll show you guys how to install it so with pop os you can install the gtk version I'll show you guys how to install it and then all you have to do is click on your software center and then go in and type sync thing and there's a flat pack for it and just type it all the way out you'll see sync thing there gtk this is the one i recommend click on it you can see it it's basically a gui uh, it allows you to sync everything in it and it installs the daemon in the background so we're good to go this is a flat pack we can install it this way and it's 1.1 gigabytes all right so the install is done and the reason we can tell it just says open there now so i'm gonna just hit open and close that now you have to go through a quick wizard and this will set everything up for you on for the and all that stuff so press enter this is a binary now we want to listen on localhost or listen on all interfaces i'm gonna just listen on our interfaces put a password on it just like we did on that other one let's just type root again just don't get them confused you know what i'm saying because it's basically two different applications running on two different systems so if you want to go into one of them you have to go to that ip address type in the user name password for it and then you can make your changes over there if you need to and so let's hit next there and we can go to finish it that's pretty much it and so it's going to open up it's going to create the daemon or start the daemon and then right now it's offline this is the default folder i don't know if you guys remember that from the website but they do have a default folder that's already created there just for people to use but i created my own so let's go back over to pop os and what you want to do is add the device and so you need the device id for this so uh, i'm gonna click yes right there boom all right cool and one thing you want to do is just go down and create a folder right fast i'm gonna create a folder called projects or project one and create that folder under my home directory and then now we need our identity because we have to add this system to our share so boom press center close that and then we want to go to that ip address of our other server so we can add a device so let's see 192.10.209 press enter and totally forgot the port but let's type the port in so it's 83 84 center and it's not a ssl site all right there we go all right so we want to log into this server and we named it the exact same thing with the same password over here but we can add our identity over here so all you have to do is hit add remote device and paste our device id in here that we copied 
boom. And then we can name that device. You just say this is our Pop! OS system. I just type Pop! OS, hit save and disconnect it unused. So we're good to go there, disconnect it. And we switch back over to the browser of our server. You'll see it's there already as well. So Pop! OS is over there as well. Now back over here, we need to open up this right here in the action, show ID, and we gotta grab the other key. So this is the identity for the Ubuntu server that we had set up. And so we have to go over here, add device, and we can pipe in that device ID, and we can put UBS24. And this is a feature you'll see, I, I didn't point this out on the other side, but you can leave it dynamic. That way, if your systems change IP addresses, they can find each other. So it'll find the IP address. Now, if it's a static IP address, let's say the server, then we get to go there. And then let's hit save there. We're good to go. And then right here, you'll see a pop-up. It'll basically say you want to add that system. Let's hit save. And there we go. So that's our server right there. It's going to find it. Just give it a little time. All right. Now that we got to add it on both sides, we need to go to our server again. So let's go back to the website. And then what we need to do is just edit it right fast. We can go back in there. And then we can share with a specific system. System. And so if untrusted, you can enter a encryption password, but we know it's safe, but we can go down and hit save and it'll sync. It'll start syncing over there. And then if we switch back over to our system, so it should pop up with a pop-up right here, basically saying add in this project ID. We specify our location, which is that project one directory and press save. And then you start seeing all the files start populating. That's all coming from our server. They have been copied over. So global stats, 14 files, local state, 15 files. It synced over all our files and we're up to date. So that's essentially how it works. And so let me go over here to the browser for our other server. And let's actually rescan over here and see. Cause I think I might have it turned off where it doesn't send receive. All right, so we can go over here and edit that. And actually, let me show you guys something very fast. You can open up the browser from the application and let's see if we can make changes. Cause it seems like there's a little bit more changes in here. So let's go edit. Where is it under advanced? Yeah, here we go. So send and receive. That's what I was looking to do. That way they both send and receive from that folder. This is our Ubuntu one. It should sync over here now. If we switch over to the browser right in here, so you can see it right here, latest change. So that's on our server. It copied over that update untitled text file, which is the file that I created. And then as you can see, it changes up here as well. So 15 files. So they're basically synced up. All right. So that wraps up the video. We've covered what sync thing is, why you would want to use it and how to install and configure it on Ubuntu and even walk through a real world use case. And I hope you found this video helpful and that you're excited to start syncing your own files with SyncThing. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the Keep It Techie channel for more awesome Linux and tech tutorials. And make sure you ring that bell so you never miss any update. Also, check out my GitHub repository named Ubuntu Server Arsenal for more installation scripts, including one for SyncThing, which will be uploaded in the coming days. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And as always, keep it tech. Whenever I talk to people, Whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Because, yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.